Michael Jordan and you played against Larry Bird and you met all the presidents, that that moment when you hit Golick in the face with the pie was actually better. Now that you've had some time to let it sink in, do you still feel that was actually <laughs> your greatest ever moment? Oh, I definitely feel that way. I'm a competitive guy. <laughs> and so that was the most fun I've had. And thank you, Mike, for being just uh, a guy that uh, we've gone back and forth. And, and let me say to both of you, I'm mad at both of you because – I'm 0-2 this season against both of you. Mm -hmm. Northwestern beat my Spartans, and Notre Dame blew my Spartans out as well. So this is not a good day for me to be talking to both of you because mm -hmm. you both have uh, beat my Spartans this year. But I want to just say thank you for entertaining us for almost 20 years and also giving us some incredible uh, sports and just breaking down every league, every championship, and you guys did it with such grace and style and charisma all at the same time. And then you allow guys like myself to have uh, share your platform and give our opinions, and, and so it's been so much fun. But the good thing is we're not saying goodbye because both of you are going to have an, incre an incredible new show, and uh, I look forward to seeing what both of you are going to do and uh, God has just blessed all of us viewers that you wake us up in the morning and give us all our sports analogy and an analyze the, the different teams. And uh, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be a part of the Mike and Mike show for, what, 18 years. Well, that's really nice of you, Magic. We do really do appreciate that and, and look forward to it in our new shows again to continue to have you on, and, and both Green and I are bummed we didn't make bets with you this year, quite honestly. Uh, I mean, year, we, we blew it there. But what's interesting, you know... Well, well let's, let's do it on the new shows. How about that? There you go. You know, and as we go on to, to new things, obviously what you've done since your career has been incredible, and now you've added to it with, with running, you know, the Los Angeles Lakers, a team that, that uh, you are synonymous with as one of the greatest of all time to play. So how has that been for you? I know you, you, when you we talk about ownership in the, 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 with the Dodgers and the businesses you do, but here you are running your Lakers. Has it been everything you thought it would be at this point? Well, it's definitely been everything I thought it would be. Um, I knew coming in that um, we had a young group, and that's how we have to build it through uh, the youth. And um, we see that we have some really good young pieces. And you saw the other night Lonzo Ball became the youngest to ever get a triple-double. And then we got uh, Kyle Kuzma that we're building around as well, uh, KCP, and then, you know, some veterans like Brooke Lopez. So uh, Brandon Ingram is, I think, going to be a star in the league. So we're building around some very, very uh, young pieces, and our fan base is really excited about these young men because they're playing hard every night. We're in every game. And so that's all I want. I want us to grow and get better. And as we see, when the other teams come come down, uh, some of the older teams come down, then we'll be going up. And I think that that's, that's what we're looking forward to. I, I would jokingly say the only reason he became the youngest player ever to record a triple-double magic is because you played two years of college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. But having said that, you know, with Lonzo, for a variety of reasons, the fact that, that you handpicked him and he's there in L.A. And, and you're bringing back Showtime and all the stuff with his dad. I mean, every game, there's such a microscope on him. It feels like every single game he plays is a referendum on whether he's that good or he isn't. What kinds of conversations have you had with him about all of that pressure and all of that attention? Well, Mike, that's a, a great question. And what I try to do is just really say, hey, just play your game. Because... Born and raised in Los Angeles, always wanted to play for the Lakers. And then, like you said, LeVar, you know, making comments. I think that going in, um, we thought that LeBron James was the the biggest rookie ever, you know, in terms of most publicized. And then uh, now here comes Lonzo Ball in terms of publicity-wise. And because of social media and all that, he was a guy with a target on his back because of – uh, of his father and being drafted number two pick. And so I think he's handled it well. And, uh, of course, he's not shooting the way he would like to shoot, but I think that uh, that will come. We saw the other night 
Uh, he hit a couple threes. He shot the ball well. He was what we want him to do. Where he's at his best is when he is pushing that basketball, and when he is relentless at pushing it. And so, and then he he he, he all his game really comes together when he's doing that. When he's playing with aggression and he's going downhill, and so just play that way, play your game, and then let everything else come together. And I tell you what, though. The guys really love playing with him because if you're open, he's going to get you the ball. And that's the type of guy these guys want to play with, the pass-first guy. Also, he's a winner. He's won at every level. So we know that uh, once we surround him with all the pieces like we have, like like I said, Brandon, Eam, Kyle Kuzma, all the young players we have, and then we have cap space that we clear so we can sign a couple of veterans hopefully next off season. Then we're moving into saying, hey, we're a playoff team and we're a championship team. Yeah, let's not talk about anybody potential you can bring no, in. No, 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 no. <laughs> we don't want to go down that road again. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, you don't, we don't want to say that Magic Johnson on Mike and Mike uh, got in trouble, got fined. We don't want no, to be doing that. No, not on, you know, your last week and everything. I'm with you. And, and you're so right about Alonzo watching him play. It makes players, I think, hustle more knowing if they uh, get, get just a bit open that he's going to find them with the ball. And it is fun to watch his vision on the court but in a general question you know in my sport of football sometimes when a quarterback comes in with a different kind of release uh, a throwing point the coaching staff is kind of at a dilemma do we try and mess with it or do we kind of let it be you know a guy like philip rivers everybody talked about his delivery they let it be and the guy you know is, is had a great career others they try and tweak and change how does it work in basketball we all see how lonzo shoots the ball and as you say he's struggling shooting do you try and change what he does or in that sport you kind of just let somebody work through it how they how they need to yeah i think it's a um it's it's a fine line because what you have to do is first he's been shooting that way his whole life so what we wanted to do was just let him play his game let him shoot the way he's been shooting and uh hopefully you know they'll go in and so we're not going to mess with it we're going to let him shoot and play his game and if uh we can if after the season he's not shooting well then we'll sit down with him and say hey you know, let's maybe look at a different way or let's try to improve the way you are shooting. What, what is it that caused you not to shoot well? Is it your balance? Is it the fact that you didn't release it well? So we can break it down with him, but we don't want to mess with his shot. He's, you know, he's proven that he's knocked that shot down and we want him to encourage him to keep shooting. And like I said, against Milwaukee the other night, uh, he had two or three of those go in three pointers. So, Maybe it's coming back for him now. And also, we have to remember something. They're playing more games in terms of these rookies than they've ever played in their life. And I'm talking about in a week. You know, they may play three games in a week. So also, we're talking about dead legs, too. So I think once he gets into shape, his legs get used to playing this many games in a week that they don't play in college, then I think he'll be okay. Talking to Magic Johnson, the Lakers president of basketball operations. Another kind of a general question. You mentioned some of the guys, Kuzma's 22, Ingram 20, Ball 20. Young players. So young players now in professional sports and in the NBA, back when you were a young player to the young players now, give us some of the biggest differences of players the youth of professional athletes today with all the outside noise involved of social media and just the differences of when you were a young player to now i think you just said it right there it's, 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 it's two things it's social media and everybody having a voice when when you and i played only the stars had a, a voice right and and every all the media just ran to them and, and quoted them and now, because of social media, everybody has a, uh, has a voice. So now, as, as, a, as a president, I got to monitor 15 guys, what they're doing on social media, what they're saying. And then guys today really care about their brand. And so you and I didn't know what a brand was when we played. We just went out there and played and, and tried to be the best player we could on a nightly basis. And so... <clears throat> so now, you know, we have that as a factor as well. I think, uh, and then last but not least in basketball, and you can tell me more about football, um, when I played, 
probably three out of a hundred shots were three pointers. Now, forty percent of every shot <laughs> out of a hundred is is a three pointer. Mm -hmm. And so now the game has really changed. Where it used to go inside out, now you go outside in. And so I think those are the biggest differences in terms of. Uh, of what I went through and what today's player goes through. And now if you're a big man, you got to have a jump shot now. you got to have uh, be able to go out to the three-point range. And if you can't, it's, it's hard for you to play in our, in our league today. Mike and Mike, the great Magic Johnson is with us, and it just feels like the right time to ask you a big-picture question. So I'd ask you this. You, you and Larry came into the league together. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but it's almost 40 years ago now, um, and, and are credited with having sort of taken the NBA to entirely new heights, and I think 100% rightly so. I feel like we're seeing that happening again in the NBA right now. I feel this is a great time for the sport. I feel like there's a ton of young stars, a ton of attention. Television ratings are good. The conversation around the sport is bigger and better. I'd love to just get a thought from you on where you feel the NBA is 